Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app. We're on Podbean, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. We're also on Dash Radio every single weeknight at 7 p.m. on their Nothing But Net channel. Also, check out Five Reasons YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons. You'll get all of our content throughout the week, not just on the Heat, but on the other teams. And also, FiveReasonsSports.com. Make sure that you're spelling that one out. Also, check out the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. We know that the Heat are not playing. You can still play prize picks, okay? So get in with all their special props for the finals between the Celtics and the Warriors, and of course, on all of the other sports that are going on, including MLB and MMA. So go to prize picks. You can get it at the Google Play Store. Also, you can get it on the App Store or just go to prizepicks.com. You get 100. If you use a code 5, F-I-V-E, that's F-I-V-E, you get $100 to play with if you deposit a hundred bucks, but you don't need to deposit a hundred deposit 20 and they'll give you 20 to play with. It's free money. So go to prize picks, use that code F I V E. And now today's episode. Down to this gang. Yay. Yes. Uh, five on the floor. Ride for my dogs. Where here's the thing. You can check the score. Hustle hard. Couple scars. Wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buck the said, You in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor playing. Got an all band. Y'all seen the block. Stop with one hand. And Pat, we trust. It's power. Have the guts. We here to bring the heat. Y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, Ethan Skolnick back on Five on the Floor. Here's today's floor plan. We got the whole crew back today. You can follow Greg Sylvander at Greg Sylvander. You can follow Alex Toledo at Tropical Blanket, and you can follow Brady Hawk at Brady Hawk 305. We've been going through our player reviews. We did Kyle Lowry. We did Tyler Hero. We also did Duncan Robinson and Max Truce together. Today, we're going to devote an episode to Jimmy Butler, but it's not so much about what Jimmy Butler did, because I think we would all agree uh, that Jimmy Butler was, you know, terrific in the playoffs. Uh, you know, obviously, with the exception of a couple of games where he was banged up, uh, he played extremely well. He played extremely well during the regular season, although he did miss a lot more time, I think, than everybody may have liked uh, during the year. But it's probably going to be a consistent thing for the rest of his career. But I think all of us uh, went into the season thinking Jimmy was going to be good and Jimmy was good. And Jimmy looks like he's going to be able to earn that contract that he was given the extension. The question is really this. okay? the question is, how do they make the most of the Jimmy window? And it's a question we've we've talked about in a bunch of different ways, but we're going to be very specific with it tonight. And I'll, I'll just start here with everybody. With one question. Do you think, Greg, that Jimmy Butler can be, with what we've seen, uh, I know we ask this question all the time, but now in the finals, we're watching what Steph Curry is doing. We're watching what Jason Tatum is not really doing, uh, at least from an efficiency standpoint. Or do you believe strongly that Jimmy Butler can be a number one option on a championship team? Because that that is really where this has to begin. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Like that, I think that that's probably been the biggest takeaway of Jimmy's tenure in Miami is that, his highs are as high as anybody's highs and he can do it in bursts. Right. And I think the challenge is figuring out a way for him to bottle that up at the right moments and, and how you balance the rest of the season and, and and eat up all those innings in January and stuff like that. But to me in the biggest games, that game, like, listen, we're going to come to a dog day of this summer and we're going to do an episode on game six in Boston and what Jimmy did up there. Like it was that much, like it it was that much fun and it was that good. Uh, I have no doubts, but there is some things that they could use. And I think that when we talk about narrowing it down, um, if I could distill it in two quick things, it's, they need another, elite score or volume score of some kind to take pressure off these guys who kind of have uh, their issues or limitations offensively. And then they really need a front core partner from uh, for Bam. And those are the two things that I think would help Jimmy the most allowing Bam to be what Bam, um, you know, is, and then also just having another score to take some of that pressure off him. And if you can make it the same player and split the difference, that's great. But I think it actually, there's kind of two elements to this with, with maximizing Jimmy on this roster. And I think that's the key thing here, right? Is that there is some nuance to this, that it's not as simple as saying you have to have this guy to win a championship. I don't think necessarily going into the season, people were saying, 
Jason Tatum was the guy that you needed to win a championship with it. He was a top five player in the league and he was going to take you to the finals. In fact, when the team was at 500, about halfway through the season, the Celtics, nobody was saying that they were saying maybe Tatum and Brown need to be broken up. Steph Curry has proven kind of that he can be a number one on a championship team. Well, he has proven that, but then of course Durant stepped in for a period of time and then Steph got hurt. And now if they win, people are going to say Steph Curry can be a number one on a championship team. But I also watch where Steph Curry struggled with bad players. Um, and now all of a sudden he's got a complimentary group. So I'll ask you the same question, Alex. Can Jimmy Butler be a number one on the championship team? Yeah, that's not really something that there's any doubt in my mind about at this point. Like, I think he's already shown you, you know, it's hard to take for granted the fact that he did not do what he has on this team before he got here, right? Like, I think they they acquired him. He's He already had a, you know, a nice career up to that point and was a was an impactful player. And, you know, ever since then, with with hindsight, we can all look at look at it now and, uh, we not we all already felt this way, but I think other people who were kind of skeptical and calling him, you know, uh, dipping to Miami, a retirement move and all that can now look back on all of it and say, you know, he he was a huge reason for the Timberwolves making the playoffs. He was the Sixers, po- probably their best player on a night to night basis when he was there. You know, when he left the Bulls, <laughs> I mean, they just went straight to the top of the lottery. Like a lot of these teams after he left, they were just not the same without him. And now ever since he's been here, he's gone up a level since that. Right. Like, so I'm trying to give respect to what he was before. And then he has, you know, gone past those expectations, at least for me. And I think for a lot of people, because I think even as far as, you know, Heat fans, I feel like it was still a team that was a little bit underrated going into that season. And then ever since that season, when they made the finals, it's just been more talk about how, you know, uh, it's not sustainable and it's not. Then they had the ugly playoff run and now Jimmy did it again. So the, the thing with Jimmy is like, no, he uh, he steps up his game in the playoffs. That's exactly what you want out of a superstar. I'm not worried about him at all. Like, I think he just needs a little bit more help. He needs his team to step up a little bit. But as far as Jimmy Butler himself, like he's already shown you, I can get you real far. You know, just give me a little bit of help when I need it the most. And I think when we talk about it in, in that sense, um, I think him being underrated nationally plays into some of the perception locally that, that they need this other guy. I mean, remember <laughs> They were four points away from the finals, okay, uh, with, with everything that was kind of going wrong with, like, historically historic drops in shooting percentage from three compared to where it was in the regular season, and they still were that close. So we can talk about Milwaukee's injuries, and maybe it would have been them instead of Boston, whatever. The fact is they were that close. But before we go to the break, uh, Brady, I'll ask you this. If there is one thing before we get into what you need to help Jimmy with, if there is one thing you would like to see Jimmy work on this off season, what is it? It's tough to say because it was funny when Greg and Alex were talking and you were asking the question about them, him being the best player on a championship team. The reason I was totally aligned there was that we never asked that question about what Jimmy needs to do. It's always like, what do the others around Jimmy need to do to fill his gaps. Like we never push him in that fashion. And you don't do that a lot of anyways with veterans, I guess, because it's always the young guys that are developing. Uh, but I think the first thing uh, I know most fans would point to is probably three point shooting because the shot that clinked off the rim that eventually led to them losing in game seven was a pull up three. Uh, and we saw that kind of make its way back into earlier Jimmy Butler fashion. Like he, his three point shooting was surging at the right time. Like it was actually looking really good. He was getting up a lot more. Uh, Like it felt like everything was kind of clicking there. Uh, But I think there's still the element of, I know we're going to get into what he needs and the scoring around him, but consistently being able to do the same thing in his role. Like that's the difference here. Like if you have a certain score to put next to him, Jimmy Butler doesn't have to do everything. He doesn't have to go into NBA finals in the bubble mode. He doesn't have to go game six in Boston mode. Like he's going to just, know his role. I'm going to be an attacker and a mid range guy in the mid post. I don't have to expand into a playmaker on the left wing. I don't have to expand into a creator down the baseline off the corner. Like if they can find a way to just allow him to be Jimmy Butler in the same spots, like I feel like that's a difference maker Uh, guys like we're watching right now with Stefan Tatum, like they're obviously top tier players and they can do it from every spot on the floor, but their roles are pretty aligned in ways that they can pretty much do it consistently in the same area. So I think that's the next step for him. And it still comes back to the thing that I don't know if that's a Jimmy Butler thing. That's more of a team thing, a team building, a schematic thing than more of a Jimmy Butler thing. So uh, Jimmy is more of the cliche thing in the off season that it's just kind of polishing up his entire game where I think probably everybody else in the roster is more focused on specific elements. 
All right, and that's a good transition, and we're going to get to that in a second because what we're going to do in the next part of the episode is talk about what needs to happen on the current roster if it can get done there. And then in the third section tonight, we're going to talk about what would have to happen outside the roster to make this thing work. Before we do, though, you got the schmutz. Even with the heat done, they got the guts. You got to check out water cleanup of Florida. Man, like you got the water damage, the mold damage, the fire damage. You got to find somebody reputable, fully licensed, insured, and certified. That's water cleanup of Florida. They're here for you 24 hours a day to help you with any of the impact and stress that an unexpected disaster may cause. They got over 60 years of combined experience. Reach out to our guy, Michael, Robert, and their entire team. They're prepared to handle any size disaster. Again, they're third-generation contractors in South Florida. They want to maintain their sterling reputation. Why do you think they're advertising with us? Check out Water Cleanup of Florida, providing the A to Z service and one-stop shopping. You can check them out at watercleanupflorida.com, watercleanupflorida.com, or on Instagram at watercleanupflorida and, or I'm sorry, excuse me, watercleanupfl. They'll handle the entire thing for you. Or the easiest thing, actually, he's a really good guy. Just reach out to Michael. He's a big Heat fan. 954-579-0356. That's 954 954- Five seven nine zero three five six. If you've got the schmutz, they got the guts. All right, so let's transition to the second part of this episode, and it gets into whether or not the Heat would have, in some ways, the guts to just run it back when everybody's telling them not to. So let's do this in the same order again. Greg, I'll go to you. Um, if if it's going to be similar in terms of the top end of this roster. Okay. I mean, there are tweaks around the edges. I mean, we're going to do a bunch of episodes on mid-level guy, all that kind of stuff. We will get into all of it. But if it looks the same, if it's Jimmy Bam and Tyler, basically, as your primary guys with Kyle Lowry, how do you make it easier on Jimmy Butler? Can you? That's a tough one. You need Tyler to take another leap. You need it to be a consistent leap. And you need him to be able to, because part of this is carrying a Jimmy led team through the regular season to get him to the finish line so that then Jimmy can do what he does. And, um, and Tyler hero was particularly good at that this season. It's just, then you need him to also be able to kick into playoff gear. And that's where, so you would need Tyler hero to take the lump that he just did in the, in the playoffs and things like when he got blitzed and he couldn't respond to it, he's going to need to figure that kind of stuff out. And that's the big question, right? Do they have the time to wait for him to figure those things out? Usually guys take a couple lumps and heartbreaks throughout playoff runs. That's how young players develop. And then they break through. Do they have the time to wait for Tyler to go through that? Um, The other internal part of this would be Bam Adebayo, obviously becoming a a larger focus. Riley talked about it at the pressers. uh, If they got him more offensively inclined to get up to 15 field goal attempts, I still don't think that that's necessarily enough. Frankly, I think that there's other things that play. They need Kyle to be a a more of an offensive factor, just sheer scoring. Um, And then the shooters, obviously like this, this is the one thing we forget is that a lot of this, was predicated the success was on on good shooting and that's what made them so good throughout the regular season so there is an element of of make or miss that just stuff has to go in and we've talked about that on other episodes like how many shooters like designated shooters specialist shooters you're going to put in the starting in the the rotation how many do you have room for i want to pivot to the lowry thing here with you alex because for this reason okay because we are putting it on tyler and we are putting it on bam Kyle's getting paid a lot of money and Jimmy wanted him. And to a certain degree, that's limiting what they can do now. Right. Like, I mean, unless they're going to flip Kyle in in a deal, you know, and use his money. So in some ways kind of, I mean, if they don't make that deal, and again, I, Greg, I would have to go back through the cat mechanics and all the rest of this stuff. But like, if they don't make the deal and they just let Dragic's deal expire (laughs) at the end, right. At the end of last this season, they might be in a different position against the tax, against all all kinds of different things. They might have a little bit more maneuverability. They don't be in a different position. All right. It just, uh, that would mean they didn't go as far as they did. Well, perhaps. Well, although Kyle didn't have anything to do with where they went in the playoffs. I mean, I mean, mean, he had, he had had a lot to do with getting them getting the one seat though. It it had a lot to do with seeding. You're right. But it didn't have anything. I mean, he had nothing to do with them advancing to the Eastern conference finals game seven. I mean, I, I mean, nothing right i mean injury related but I mean, we agree on that right he Besides had one his game huge game six performance six i mean he, he definitely was, was not enough like I, I we can all agree on that like i think it's that's the most obvious thing like between kyle and tyler 
they did not get enough. The thing with me is, you know, is Kyle is obviously, you know, very old for, for an NBA player playing through a bad hamstring. And despite that, was still positive uh, for them in the playoffs. So it's hard for me to get too uh, tough with him. But it's true. Like, he is their third highest paid player. You know, it's their first season with him. So I think it's just not a great introduction, right? Like, I think for a lot of Heat fans, it's somebody who I think people were just kind of uh, up and down on right could go either way on when it comes to Kyle Lowry before they acquired him like I think he's somebody who um, had a uh, a weird reputation because he sort of had the reputation of somebody who is not clutch or whatever not efficient in the playoffs and then I think he kind of redeemed himself a little bit with people when he won that title with 2019 I just think the guy is a smart and valuable player to have on your team they need more from him that's you know that's a fact. And that's kind of where I, I follow him is I think that if they manage the season a little bit next season where, you know, you just hope that you can kind of take it easy with him dur during the regular season, rely on your depth. Cause even if they do run it back and I, I don't know that they're going to have the exact same roster, but if they did, like, I just think what they have is a pretty good machine to get you a good seed in the playoffs, even if the East is going to be uh, tough again next season. So I think that's somebody who between him and PJ, um, you know, try to make sure that they're just healthy for the, the playoffs because you saw it. Like, I don't think he can do that again, right? Like, you got to manage that hamstring, uh, kind of have, I think, a conservative, you know, maybe not to the to the lengths that they did, like, with Dwayne, but something like that, right? Just to kind of keep him healthy because I think, you know, there's no shot. There's no shot if your guys are not healthy with the way this team is built now. Like, I think Kyle was out there just being a nice – uh, role player for them they need him to be more than that they need him to be a high level point guard and you know it should not be a question of you know are they better off with another guy playing his position like we were talking about with Gabe who was more of a positive for them in the playoffs so that cannot be the case going forward at, at about at about 120th the price uh yeah and and that's the thing I mean I, I'm not trying to pile on Kyle here but I feel like we're just sort of assuming he can't do more at this stage and obviously uh what do you call it Pat doesn't agree with that. And that's what, where the conditioning thing comes in, but there's a salary cap reality to this. I mean, there's just, there's only so much money you can spend. If you're spending money on uh, for, you know, $30 million on a guy who is, you know, who's the guy that Jimmy wanted and it's preventing you from maybe doing some other things. And he's a good for a portion of the season, but you, he doesn't seem to want to score, which is what this team needs a lot of the time. He was good defensively this year. No, I, I, I and, and he was very big for them when other guys were out. Okay. Particularly when he was playing without both Jimmy and bam. Okay. He gave them really good minutes, but Brady, I, I, I guess I get to this because if I was to say to you is hero bam or Kyle, like let, let, let's, let's take the contracts into consideration here too. Okay. Who, who needs to help Jimmy the most if, if they're all going to be back here. If we're taking everything in consideration, I'd probably have to say Tyler just because he's the guy that's constantly being thrown in as the trade piece, that the guy to get the guy. Uh, so I think it is him in the way that if he takes that step and he's – I keep saying about the regular season averages into the playoffs. If he has those same numbers, we're probably talking about things a lot differently. They're probably in a lot different spot in the playoffs if he carried that over. But obviously when he things kind of stalled out, uh, we talked about him being a decoy. But Jimmy Butler doesn't need Tyler Hero to be a decoy when things come down to it and really matter in the postseason. They need Jimmy Butler is going to need Tyler Hero to be high level Tyler Hero, uh, and that's when it comes down to these other stars and you talk about training for them because those guys are the same player when it comes down to it. So I probably would say Tyler. I think Bam is not more much as much as we talk about him as a player. I think it's more of the aggression shot attempts. I think we can all agree on that. That's not the stepping up in a different manner as an offensive player. It's just getting to. As Pat said, maybe 15, 16 shot attempts. That's the big thing to get to. Uh, and Kyle, as you guys just mentioned, like I just don't know if there's as much expectation there. Like It's not that he can't do it, but I don't think they want him doing it at the level in the regular season. They want to try to save him as much as possible. But I will say something I talked about recently is if it is Tyler, the thing that he's going to need to work on in the offseason to allow Jimmy to kind of balance it internally is as an isolation score. Like that's the big thing for me. The more I think about it, the more I look at these other guys, these guys, the guys that are in Jersey swaps on Twitter, as we speak, the Donovan Mitchell's, the Bradley Beals, the Zach Levine's, these guys are all high level isolation scorers in some manner, like in some manner, they can get their own bucket when they want to. If a team blitzes them, they're going to say, okay, I'm not going to call for a screen clear out. And I'm going to take this guy one-on-one -on -one, and I'm going 
to put the ball in the basket. That's what they need from him. Like if it comes down to it, that's the counter from that. Like, I feel like we kind of got away from that a lot of times in the playoffs because we were just so like expecting the fact that he needed that screen to become something in a lot of those spots. So that's the big thing there. If we're looking into the specifics, if they're going to go the route of kind of these different changes on the outside and they're going to go heavily into this same core and just worry about internal, uh, I guess, developments, that Tyler development could be the difference maker, in my opinion, if there was something to pimple. All right, we're going to go outside now uh, after this. We do want to tell you about one more sponsor. It's called Better Edge, B-E-T-T-O-R-E-D-G-E, B-E-T-T-O-R-E-D-G-E.com backslash five reasons. This is where you do the peer-to-peer betting. So, like, you want to bet? You don't want to do it with an offshore. You want to do it legally. This is the way to do it. And here's the other cool thing about it. You can get your friends on there too, but you can also just find all kinds of people to find the other side of the line. So if you don't like the line on the NBA finals or an MLB game or a WNBA, whatever it is that you're betting, when we get to NFL in September, you can find the opposite side of the line and then just decide if that's the price that you want to try to earn for your bet. So go to better edge is a totally different concept. B E T T O R E D G E.com backslash five reasons. It's not an app. You just find it right there on the website. All right, this is going to be the shortest section because we have an entire offseason to do this stuff, okay? So we're not going to do 20 minutes on this. I, I just I want to do this quickly to kind of tee this up. The perfect player to put with Jimmy Butler to carry him over the finish line in this build, Greg Sylvander, is? Donovan Mitchell and a four to be named later with a mid-level exception. And to do that, you're going to have to get him to ask out. You're going to have to get uh, it's going to have they're going to have to get them to want Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson, most likely. And then you fill the role with with the uh, most likely. I mean, it could be a three way deal. Those are options. Uh, but that's the most likely scenario. But it has to start with Donovan Mitchell basically saying, I don't want to be in Utah anymore. And, and Donovan um, was recently photographed with Jimmy <laughs> Butler at uh, their trainer um, at his birthday bash. They're just, you know, coincidentally sitting next to each other, coincidentally having dinner, coincidentally chilling. Coinciden- anyway. Coincidentally, friendship with Bam Adebayo, coincidentally. Um, Alex, the perfect player to put with Jimmy Butler to get him over the hump here. So I guess it's just like guys who might may or may not be available. Right. I mean, both. Kind of narrow I mean, it down. I mean, I mean, we, we got to be able to at least create a scenario. I mean, I just created a scenario. I mean, we everybody knows the scenario for Donovan Mitchell. Uh, you know, so I mean, there's a scenario. I'm not saying it's a particularly likely scenario, but there's a scenario. Yeah. So you got you got to give me somebody, somebody where there's a scenario. So there is a scenario and I'm not going to say it's just as likely as Donovan, because I, I obviously I would be I would be more than happy with Donovan. But just just to give a different answer here, somebody who I think might be a cleaner fit. If there is a scenario with uh, a sign and trade somehow with Zach Levine, I think that would be an awesome fit here. He's kind of the the tallest out of the, you know, between him, Donovan, and I guess Bradley Beal, since, you know, he had those comments to Taylor Rooks last week. I think that stuff started heating up a little bit with Heat fans. Uh, I think he, you know, he's the most athletic out of the three. Uh, he's the best off-ball player out of the three, in my opinion. Like, I think he's taken some big jumps over the past couple of seasons. I think he's actually the best defender out of the three at this moment, right? Like, th- those things could change, but I think I, uh, I would probably take him for his physical profile because you will be pairing him. Well, you know, maybe not at that point because of uh, cap machinations, but if you're, uh, you know, going to be pairing somebody like that with a Lowry or even with a Gabe Vincent, if you have to trade Lowry, which I know is not likely, uh, I think you would want the guy who's a little bit taller. So I think Levine with the stuff that he has off ball, the fact that, you know, his athleticism, the heat lack athletes, the, t- the fact that he is an ISO scorer, he can kind of get it wherever he's a three level scorer. I think he will be great. I'm with you on this, and I'll say this. Um, he's not a great defender, but at this stage, neither have Bradley Beal and Donovan Mitchell been. So I think that, he's he's a good deal ahead of those two, at least. I, I do think he's better. The athleticism makes a difference. The knee is troublesome. I, the, he, he's had issues with that knee now for the past couple of years. He did rely on athleticism. I give that kid a lot of credit, though, because it's funny. Uh, Wiggins, I, I, I did a story I, I, when I was with Bleacher Report. So this was after Wiggins was drafted. I followed the Timberwolves around for about a week to write a piece about Wiggins. I ended up spending most of the time talking to Zach Levine. I mean, he, he was a baby at the time, like completely, completely raw. And he had no three point shot, none. And he's developed into a pretty good three point shooter, you know, for the most part on, on high volume, in addition to everything else he does. And so I think the work ethic is there. Um, The need, 
worries me a little bit. I, I just, you know, I, I want it because he has evolved enough that he's not completely relying on athleticism, but that would concern me. Brady, perfect player to get them over the hump here. For good pod structure, I should probably say Bradley Beal just because he's the third guy that I feel like aligns with those guys. But I'm going to say it's any of the three. Like, I feel like it is. It's just a, some level of a three-level score that can get their own bucket that we keep discussing. But the other part that Greg mentioned before, I want to get into lean in that direction a little bit more is say the front court piece. Like, I don't know exactly who that's going to be because it, we could go through options. I know we will in certain pods coming up. But the big thing I was looking into some stuff, which tent leans in the direction of getting Jimmy Butler help is looking at the way they've kind of worked this front court next to Jimmy Butler, like PJ Tucker, he was wearing a Jersey. I think today of him while he was, you know, hooping in the heat facility, uh, ideal player on this team, ideal defender, ideal offensive player that they kind of propelled in a way. I don't think they expected, but so much of their offense is PJ Tucker corner threes. It's been his whole career of driving kicks, but it's never anything above the break. Like that's just not the way this heat offense is constructed because they don't have that type of threat. Bam Adebayo is not an above the break uh, three point threat. As we know, PJ Tucker is still not an offensive threat above the break. That changes things. If he has that type of pick and pop threat, to allow instead of constant rolling, constant rolling and kind of clogging the paint for Jimmy Butler. I think that's a way that could really open him up as an offensive player. And I was looking this past season, he were bottom eight in above the break field goal attempts. They were actually second in field goal percentage above the break, but they were bottom eight in field goal attempts above the break. Like if there's one Avenue, I feel like that should be explored at least offensively to help Jimmy. That's a way to space things out. I don't know who that guy is. I know guys like Christian Wood get brought up, but somebody in some fashion to just be able to pop out and, you know, have somebody that's not going to be able to be the guy that's being helped off of, like in the playoffs. And it's P.J. Tucker, as good as he was all season, there were points where Jimmy Butler in game six, even when he was going nuclear and continued to score, he was finding two on him because P.J.'s guy was dipping off from like that type of stuff. Uh, it feels like a big deal. So I guess it's it's the continue. I feel like it's the obvious answer. It's three level score and that above the break three, that, that guy that feels like the guy that kind of fits next to Jimmy in this specific build, at least. This feels a little bit to me like a conflict between the hope of trying to get a guy who asks out and forces a team to take less than they want to, which is something that the Heat have basically been scavengers under the Pat Riley era to do that over and over and over, whether it was for Shaq or Jamal Mashburn or Tim Hardaway or Jimmy Butler or any of the others, right? There's that hope versus the hope that Bam Adebayo can be that above the break shooter or that Tyler Hero is going to be that consistent three level isolation and isolation scorer. And honestly, right now with what I've seen, even as much as Bam and Tyler have improved, I'm leaning towards having a little bit more hope in Pat getting it done this off season than I am in those guys getting it done internally. Agree. That's Right. That's that's kind of where I'm at. And I think that's the calculation that they're going to be making. But they have to sell the internal stuff in case they don't get the guy from outside to help. But I think we're all in agreement. Jimmy's enough, but he needs help. Can it be Can I ask one question before we close this? Do, you always just, do this when I, I have a good. Yes question. or no. Go ahead. Yes or no yes. question. Yes. If you guys saw the heat get more or less and i think i've said this on another part but just to kind of gauge where you guys are because i think we would all you know maybe to different degrees be disappointed if they just did nothing as far as upgrades this offseason right they just retain guys you know maybe not maybe i'm wrong there but as far as if they got similar production from kyle and tyler as they did in the regular season in the playoffs what do you think happens? Like, do they you don't, think they, they don't win a title? Because I think that there were teams that were diminished in the Eastern Conference playoffs this year. And, and I don't necessarily think you're going to catch the breaks of Milwaukee being hurt. Uh, and some of the other things that happened in the Eastern Conference this year, I think it was a strong conference, but I think there'll be more threats next year. I, 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 fluke, am usually, huh? I am usually of the run it back mode when a team is close. Okay. I made that mistake in 2005. Running it back to me feels a little bit like late nineties. I, I don't know. I just feel like we're going to get to the same point and then we're going to be like, Oh, those warriors left it all out there again. And it was, they came up a little short. They need help. I think he needs help. I, I that's, that's why I'm, and this takes time for me because I, you know, me, I'm always the don't, you know, keep the assets. And the, I, I, they're not winning a title with this group next year. I, they're not, they're not. Okay. I, I just, I, as, as well as things went this year, 
This was a number one seed because Eric coached the hell out of it, in my view. I, I don't know that you can expect that level again next season. And teams will figure things out that they're doing, and then it'll take Eric a little time to adjust. I, I would... I would not run it back. I, I, you can't totally blow it up because they're not in position to do that. And I wouldn't, but I don't think you can come back with the same, the same basic core roster. That's, that's just where I'm at with it right now. Not when Pat's 77 and Jimmy's turning 33. No, that that's, that's not where I'm at right now. I know it's going to surprise people because that sounds like something that comes from the basement, but I, from now comes from the executive branch. Also, all right, check out betteredge.com backslash five reasons. Get your, I didn't mention this. You get $20 to play too. If you do that, prizepicks.com, get your initial deposit match up to hundred dollars with code five water cleanup of Florida. Make sure you subscribe to off the floor. I'm, I've taken a little bit of a break the last week and a half. I'm getting back at it. Twitter feed, all that stuff. Make sure that you're, uh, you're subscribed there. You're going to get all the latest draft information from us as well. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you for listening to the five on the floor on the five regional sports network.